Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Before the Mass, the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, we, the shepherds of the cathedral community, will receive the holy oils that were blessed this morning at the Chrism Mass at the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we will have the right of ex receiving the holy oils before we begin the Mass proper. It is appropriate that the oil of the sick, the oil of catechumens, and the holy chrism, which were blessed by the Archbishop during the chrism mass this morning, be presented to and received by our cathedral community at the mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday. The oil of the sick. The oil of the sick has been blessed for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May the sick who are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love. The oil of catechumens. The oil of catechumens has been blessed for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. Through this anointing, they are strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. The Holy Chrism. The Holy Chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume, has been consecrated by our Archbishop and the priests of our Archdiocese. It will be used to anoint infants after baptism, those who are to be confirmed, bishops and priests at their ordination, and altars and churches at the time of their dedication.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. We are here this evening to celebrate this solemn mass of the Last Supper as we journey with Jesus into his passion. Truly, it is a time of grace, a very solemn moment in the celebration of the Easter mysteries. And so let us ask the Lord to bless us all, bless our loved ones who are not here. And most of all, to unite us together as one family, one church. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, you have called us to participate in the most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, and trusted to the church's sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats, you must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put onto the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup of the supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it around his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. 
Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I, then the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, these words of the gospel struck my heart. The hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. How perfect his love was. My dear brothers and sisters, today as we celebrate this Last Supper Mass, we are called to reflect and to ask ourselves that when we pass from this world and return to the Father, could we also say with our Lord Jesus, that we have always loved those that the Father has given to us and that we have loved them until the end. To love them, so to speak, perfectly. My dear brothers and sisters, what does it mean when the gospel tells us how perfect his love was. In another translation, he loved them until the end. To love perfectly requires first and foremost to love those that the Father has given to rest. And Jesus, when he was on earth, everyone has been given to the Lord. He came to save not the saints only, but sinners. And so it's important for us, as in John's Gospel, John 3.16, for God loves the world so much that he gave up his only son so that those who believed in him might not perish. Jesus came to save us all, regardless whether we are sinners or even his enemies. All of us belong to the flock of the Good Shepherd, and he comes for each and every one of us. That is why all of us, everyone is important to him, and God loves each and every one of us no less than the other. That you need to believe. That you are not less loved than anyone else before God. But what does it mean to love until the end? To love perfectly. To love perfectly simply means that we are called to love without reservation unconditionally to give everything that we have for the people entrusted unto our care. To give ourselves perfectly means to give whatever we could possibly give. And that kind of love is really perfect. That is why in the washing of feet, it is actually more than just Jesus going down to wash the feet of his disciples. The going down 
is a dramatic portrayal of the self-emptying love of God. We are told in today's gospel, he got up from the table, removed his outer garment. That outer garment, of course, was his divinity. Jesus took out that outer garment. He stripped himself of his divinity to assume our humanity. In order to love us perfectly, God knows that he must be identified with us. It's easy to love someone that we do not have to dirty our hands. To love from afar is easy. Even to give money for those of us who are rich is not that difficult, especially when we give out of our abundance. It does not really hurt us. For Jesus to strip of his divinity, to assume our humanity, and we are told he took a towel round his waist like a slave. Jesus not only became man, identified with us, shared our humanity, our struggles, our temptations, our sufferings, even unto death. That is the kind of perfect love that the gospel speaks about. And so, on this Last Supper, we are called to love like Jesus. We are called to love the way he loves us. At the end of today's gospel, Jesus said, I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done for you. But my dear brothers and sisters, for many of us, when we come for the Last Supper Mass, one of the most important rituals that is enacted at the Last Supper Mass, which makes it different from the rest of the Eucharistic celebration, is the washing of feet. Many of us reduce the washing of feet simply to the service of our brothers and sisters, humble service. Certainly that is true. But to serve people that we loved is not difficult at all. To serve people that we do not know, it is also not that difficult. Because for humanitarian reasons, compassion, we will still serve them. But to serve people who have hurt us, to serve people who have betrayed us, that is much, much more difficult. And therefore, in the washing of feet, the important act of service that we are called to do, the ultimate act of service is the service of forgiveness. That is the greatest act of giving. We can give many things, they are extraneous. But to forgive a person who has hurt us deeply, it takes the whole heart and the whole being to forgive someone who has hurt us badly. That is why when Jesus washed the feet of Peter, when Peter said, you shall never wash my feet, Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. The washing of feet is a symbol of forgiveness, a symbol of baptism, that our sins are washed away. And Jesus came for many reasons, but the most important reason he came is to render the forgiveness of God to each one of us so that none of us would ever think that God does not forgive us. 
God's forgiveness is certain for everyone, even to the unrepentant person. That is true. Even if you are unrepentant, God will still forgive you. But you look at the situation. Jesus said to Peter, you too are clean, though not all of you. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. Judas had his feet washed. He was forgiven. Unfortunately, he was not really ready to receive the forgiveness of God. So when we say our sins are forgiven, God always forgives us. On the side of God, there is no question that God does not forgive us. On the side of man, that is where the real problem lies. Some of us are too arrogant. Some of us are too proud even to admit that we are in the wrong, that we are sinners. And so because we do not receive the forgiveness, even the forgiveness that has been given has no effect in our lives. So it is true. You can go for the sacrament reconciliation. The priest forgive your sins. Your sins are forgiven. But if you have no intention to change your life, if you have no intention to live a better life, it is not God who has not forgiven you. You have not forgiven yourself. You are like Judas. But I think the beautiful story about Judas is this. That even though when Jesus was washing the feet of Judas, can you just imagine, you put yourselves in the mind of Jesus. What was he feeling? He knew that Judas will be betraying him. He knew he was unrepentant. And yet, Jesus never gave up hope. He would still give him the morsel of bread. He would still wash his feet. He loved Judas until the end. Some of us would have given up hope to love our enemies. It's extremely difficult. But that is how Jesus loved us. And that is why he said, if I, as I have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. My dear brothers and sisters, the truth is that we do not only wash the feet of others, we wash each other's feet. Don't ever think that you are washing the feet of others as if you don't need your feet to be washed. That is the height of arrogance. Because we are sinners. We are human beings and we will hurt each other, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. But Judas, he was malicious and yet the Lord never gave up on him. And so the question is, will you do the same? Will you be able to forgive, to love those who are making your life difficult? How do you do it? Where do you find the strength to do it? That is why, again, the washing of feet is a dramatization of the passion of Christ. From heaven, stripped of his divinity, he came to earth, and he would be put to death. Tomorrow, we will enter into the passion of Christ. In the passion of Christ, we see how the Father and the Son both mutually gave themselves up of each other. 
so that they could enter into the sufferings of humanity. That is the kind of love that the Father and Son shares in the same common spirit. And we too, my dear brothers and sisters, we too are called to do the same. We are called to contemplate on the love of Christ for us. It's unconditional love. Only then we will find the strength to love others, even our enemies, hoping against all hope that one day our enemies will soften their hearts. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you have done that, and your enemies still refuse to respond, your job is done. <laughs> you cannot force people to love you. You cannot force your enemies to love you. You can only open, you can only invite. But we cannot force. Your conscience is clear. You have tried, you have reached out your hands, extended your hands of friendship, and the person still refuses that love. But why is the greatest act of service forgiveness of sins? Because, my dear brothers and sisters, to tell you the truth, many of you I know are serving. You are serving in the church, serving in the ministry, serving in some NGOs, working in your offices, but many of you bear so much hatred, resentment, and anger in your heart. You cannot serve freely. If you are full of anger over ministry members, resentment, I don't think you can really truly serve. You don't serve with a heart that is free for love. But if you can love your enemies, then you can love everyone. That is why the strength of being efficacious in service to the Lord is a man with a clean heart, a man whose heart is without malice, without hatred, without anger, without resentment. Otherwise, what is going to happen? I see so many of you, ministry members, because you are hurt, you are wounded, you use the same wounds to hurt people when you served. And that is why, because the person is not free. If you want to serve and truly be a mediation of God's love and mercy, then you need really to ask the grace to forgive all. And that is why in today's second reading from the letter of St. Paul to Corinthians, we are told that to celebrate the Eucharist is to do this in memory of Him. And every time when we drink this cup, eat this bread, we are proclaiming His death. To do this in memory of Him means precisely to extend the forgiveness that we have received from Him to others who have hurt us. Amen. In a few moments, we will relive what we have heard proclaimed in the gospel as we have the sacred tradition of the washing of the feet during this Mass of the Lord's Supper. The washing of feet has many profound theological and spiritual significance for us. This evening, we would like to prayerfully emphasize the elements of humility, love and service to all, especially the least and insignificant that is revealed in our Lord's most sublime gesture. The participants whose feet are being washed tonight have been selected randomly prior to the start of the Mass today, 
underscoring the message that everyone is called and welcomed by the Lord and to be recipients of Christian love and service. As we proceed with this prayerful act of feet washing, let us open our hearts to recognize the love that Jesus has for each of us. When the Holy Father Pope Francis washed the feet of inmates at a prison for minors, he reminded us that we too ought to wash one another's feet without judgment and with the understanding of the gospel message that all of us are worthy of God's love. In this light, the act of washing feet is not just a ritual. It is a powerful expression of our commitment to serve one another in love and humility, following the example of Christ.
let us stand. In the gospel, we hear that Jesus always loved those who were his in the world, but now showed how perfect his love was. Knowing the incomparable compassion of God expressed through Jesus, let us bring before him the needs of the church and of our world. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis and for our Archbishop, Cardinal William Go, that they may continue to be faithful to Christ's command of brotherly love and service to all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the priests and deacons of Singapore who renewed their vow of obedience to our Archbishop at the Chrism Mass this morning, that they who give their lives in the service of God's people may remain faithful and generous and stay close to our Lord in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the universal church, the people of God, that nourished by the body and blood of Jesus, they may faithfully answer the call to serve in his name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and an end to the conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East. That God may help us turn weapons of war into instruments of peace and in so doing, help uncover more effective ways to foster dialogue and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the elect of our Ashdarsi, who will be baptized and the candidates who will be received into full communion with our Catholic Church during the Easter Vigil, that they may grow ever closer to the person of Jesus through the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our community of worship, that we may see the face of the suffering Christ in the sick and the disabled, and be faithful witnesses of his love as we reach out to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, your Son, give us a Eucharist as a memorial of his unconditional love and sacrifice for us on the cross. With hearts filled with gratitude, we pray that the Eucharist will remain at the center of our lives, giving us strength to follow Christ's model of service and the grace to live for others. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands. All the praise and the glory of His name. For the Lord, for the Lord, for His holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memory of these sacrifices is celebrated, the work of redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through the right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help.
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept these oblations of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from internal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his body and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be born from the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this and participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Says the apostles, peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. under the sight of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Run, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the sup of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for some announcements. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have begun the Christian Passover, the celebration of the Paschal Triduum of our Lord. This Mass will not end with a blessing. We will end this celebration with the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament to the Altar of Repose. Christians are invited to stay awake with the Lord in prayer, accompanying Him in the Garden of Gethsemane as He awaits His arrest. We will have adoration at the Altar of Repose till midnight tonight. We ask that we maintain an atmosphere of prayer and attentiveness to the Lord. This night will be marked by our silent accompaniment with the Lord. There will be no public or audible prayer or singing because we are silently attentive and accompanying the Lord as He awaits His arrest. We encourage all of you to stay with the Lord this night, to pray, to accompany, to comfort Him. We ask that you maintain this disposition of prayer and accompaniment here within the cathedral grounds. Unfortunately, at times, Holy Thursday night, the visiting of churches can be turned into a marketplace or a fair. We are not on a carnival tonight. We are accompanying our Lord as He awaits His passion. In view of these sacred days, please note that the adoration room, the perpetual adoration room is closed and will reopen again at the Lord's Resurrection on Easter Sunday at 7 a.m. As we go in silence tonight at the end of this Mass of the Lord's Supper, we will return tomorrow to witness and honour the cross of our Lord. Tomorrow, Good Friday, we will have three services here in the cathedral, 10.30 in the morning, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. The services will also end with our solemn and silent return to our homes as the Lord is in the tomb. We will return for the great celebration of the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night. It is the mother of all vigils and Christian people who truly want to celebrate Easter joy are invited to gather here at the cathedral on Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. for the greatest celebration in the church's liturgical year, the celebration of our Lord's resurrection. It will begin at 7.30 p.m. here in the cathedral and will include the great joy of welcoming men and women into the Christian community through the waters of baptism. On Easter Sunday, Masses will be at the regular times of 8.30, 10.30 and 6 p.m. Tomorrow, the Divine Mercy devotees will also begin their nine-day novena. Please no take note that the venue for prayer will defer each day because on these solemn days, there will be no devotions here within the church as well. All we will have are the liturgical celebrations. So there will be no Divine Mercy here in the church. It will be in one of the rooms. So please check out the venues. You would have also noticed that we have set up an additional tentage, AV equipment and banners outside. We sincerely hope that you will continue to contribute and support the cathedral in her efforts of evangelization. We recognize that being a church and a mother church in the city, we have a great responsibility to the evangelization of many and we welcome all those of you who are not of a Catholic Christian background tonight 
If you have been invited here by a friend or your curiosity have brought, has brought you here, we welcome you to accompany us in the most important days of the Christian mysteries. So for our own Catholics, if you wish to give to the continued support of the Cathedral's work of evangelization, we ask you to give to the Evangelization Fund and mark it as for Evangelization Fund. That will help us defray the cost of running all these events in these most sacred days, expressing our love for the Lord and for His Church. We thank you for your generosity. That is all the announcements we have. We ask us to continue in a spirit of true prayer and devotion. For God has loved us, may we try to give Him scraps of our love as we accompany Him in these days.